Welcome to Marlins Way, where we find Lone Depot Park. We've got open air baseball for you on the show. It's the Pittsburgh Pirates taking on the Miami Marlins. First pitch coming your way next. Just about set to go now. And on the hill here today, Jesus Lizardo. What do we need to know here? Try to stay back for that power changeup. Speed differential between the fastball and the changeup is huge. Hitters, they have a hard time staying back. Now it's the shortstop, O'Neill Cruz. For Pittsburgh, the shortstop, O'Neill Cruz. The pitch. That one finds the zone, and we're underway. Hey. Strike two. Good oh. oh. change up right there. Just pulled the string. Got him swinging. Oh, there's a small sigh of relief right there. I mean, just to keep that speed off the base pass. It's not just the pitcher. It's other guys that have to think about it. From your infielders, have to think about that runner potentially stealing, but also be in position to make a play. As an outfielder, you're thinking about a base hit to the outfield. I got to get to it quickly to try to keep this guy from taking an extra base. So I think everyone just a little more relaxed that he didn't reach base. Line drive, and it stays fair. Takes the turn. He's digging for second. Now the tag at second, and he's out, trying for two. Got to love the hustle and the attitude there to try to stretch that single into a double, but unfortunately thrown out at second base. He was so close to being in scoring position. And now it's Andrew McCutcheon. And there's a strike. Good heater at 98. McCutcheon starting as the designated hitter, a member of the 2,000 hit club. Can't forget to mention he's a former MVP. Shoots a line drive single into right center, and that keeps the inning going. Batting four, the center fielder. Up next for the Pirates, Jack Sawinski. And there's a foul ball. Side. One ball, one strike. McCutcheon, the runner at first with two gone. Fastball almost got him there. Straightened him up a little bit. Side almost got him. 3 2, two out, runner on first. A lot of movement in the infield. Hitters got to stay focused on the pitch. At the belt and fires. Slow roller to first. Bell. The underhand flip. And that yeah. is the inning. Pirates leave one. And now the Marlins will have a crack at things. No score. You're dialed into the show. here at Lone Depot Park and pitching in this game Mitch Keller anytime you have five pitches to work with on the mound that repertoire can be a real weapon in terms of keeping hitters off balance man it's it's one of those things that I'm going to be looking for in this one does he have a feel for all of those pitches or is he just able to get one or two over in the strike zone where he wants now it's tough to do to be able to command all those pitches but if he can he is going to be very tough for the opponent today The line in the pitch. Fastball in for a strike and a count one and one.
Right hander kicks deals. Fights it off. He'll see another. Next offering is downstairs. This guy's a fun guy to watch taking it bad. He just battles up there. He doesn't take a pitch off at all. Makes it so difficult on the pitchers out there. You can tell they get frustrated with how long it takes to put him away. Three and that's in the dirt. Great. And batter waits. Swing and a ball popped up. That gets down for a hit. He forced a lot of pitches to be thrown and ends up collecting a hit. You know, I was watching his rounds during batting practice today. So impressed with his ability to let the ball travel back up the middle in the other way. Sometimes when you step in the box during the game, you get a little anxious and you get away from that. But so far, I've seen him stay consistent with his pregame preparation. Tim Anderson stands in now and watches strike one. Keller, an all-star a season ago, 28 years old. And he's one of the few players in Major League Baseball born in Iowa. Finds his way through base hit. Throw back in quickly. First and second now with nobody out. A couple of singles back to back. Let's get the ball out of the pitcher. There's a lot of base hits up the middle, even on ground balls. So a nice job to use that big hole and get himself a hit. Josh Bell at the plate now. And there's a strike on the outside corner. And the right hander deals. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. And the pitch. And a swing and a miss. And that is a big first out. He's really good hitting the baseball the other way. So credit the pitcher for having him out in front of that pitch. Clearly he had him fooled. And now for the Marlins, Jake Berger. Up and in, and it's 1-0. And, oh. oh. Righty delivers. Fall off foul. Two on, one out. Swing and a miss. Well, that's that slope right there. He threw it extremely well. Talk about just a ton of breaks. So tough to get that barrel to. And that one is lifted in the air. Oh, the throw is wild. Well, he wasn't afraid to hit with two strikes. I think he choked up a little bit. Maybe spread out, but he got the job done right there. Jazz Chisholm Jr. now. Golden opportunity right here. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Right into the plate. And a swing and a miss. I think he was sitting off speed there. Absolutely ripped 111 off the bat 
And I'm pretty sure it started to whistle after it left the bat. I think I heard that too, Boog. And these are the moments we appreciate when we can look at StatCast and just see exactly what the data is. Always so much fun to see what numbers pop up. No, Brian De La Cruz up to bat next. Lays off for a ball. The one off. Base hit. One run is in. Got a long throw home. Safe. He beats it. Three nothing. That's three singles in a row. But the way defenders track down balls these days, I mean, both from the infield and in the outfield, there really aren't a lot of base hits on balls hit like that. But there's always a little room back behind the first and second baseman to drop a long dart in there, and he found a way. And now the right fielder, Jesus Sanchez. Ripped on a line to center. Hauls it in for the out. Batting it. The designated hitter. And time now for the Marlins lineup. Avisail Garcia up to the plate. That one finds the zone. That's strike one. Well, with this many pitches thrown here in this first inning, I mean, you're giving the other team a really good look. He's going to have to find a way to get some weak contact, maybe a swing and miss, get into that dugout and hit the reset button. Whoa. Next pitch misses, and now it's even one and one. Missed. Tough spot right here. A couple runners on. Two ball count. You can't nibble, but you have to execute and finish your pitch. If you leave something out over the plate, it's going to bring in some runs. And a foul ball. Chisholm at second. De La Cruz at first. Two out of the inning. And a pop-up. Right side. Foul territory. And that's a foul ball. Two on, two outs. Swing and a miss. And he's down on strikes. Inning ends, and that stops the bleeding. Three runs for him here, and they move ahead. Second inning coming up here in South Florida. It's the Marlins three. It's nothing. Back here in Miami, all set for the start of the inning. Now batting Key Brian Hayes. Lazardo back to work. Just missed. Well, after putting up a nice inning on offense, got some runs across, this is where you look for the starter to go out there, have a shutdown inning. Don't give that other team any hope. Uh, you just hope that he can get through this inning, get the bats back up there while they're hot. Yeah, there's a ball. Matthew Ross behind the plate. Pitcher's umpire. Yeah, pitchers that work side to side effectively love being on the mound with Ross calling balls and strikes, Boog. If you can command your stuff on the outer edges of the strike zone, he will reward you. And a good eye there. And so the lefty allows the leadoff free pass. Definitely lost the handle during that sequence. Four pitches for the walk, and that last one. Henry. Didn't even threaten the zone. Catcher Henry. might want to go talk to him. Henry Davis stands in now, looks at that one inside. Kicks and deals. That pitch gets the corner at one and one. Here's a swing and a drive left field, and he knew it. He sends it out of here, and they throw a pair on the board. It's 3-2.
breaking ball on the inside part of the play requires a hitter to stay really square with his mechanics. If you fly open with the front shoulder, there's no way you keep that ball fair. An outstanding job mechanically. He deserves that home run. Here's Rowdy Telez. First pitch doesn't find the zone. One ball, no strike. Nobody out with a pair of runs across in the frame here at the top of the second. Right. Next offering is in for a strike. Swing and a miss. That could throw a slider oh, such a devastating great. pitch. You don't want to get beat by the inside fastball, so you cheat a little bit, and then by the time it gets there, it's out of the swing play. And the one two misses to oh, even the count. Great. So he fair at 98 miles an hour. Now it's the right fielder, Edward Olivares. Oh, Just oh. missed. Still only one out here in the inning. Late on that fastball. Well, he just threw that fastball by him, elevated, and if you're not looking up in that location, very difficult to catch up to, especially with that velocity. Here's the strike at the knees. Now one and two. Got him looking. That's a strikeout. Well, that's not the best two-strike fastball I've seen, but it certainly got away with the location there. You'll sometimes lose a hitter when you're down in the count. You're so focused on a pitcher painting the black, and you just get a little bit locked up on something down the heart of the plate, not expecting it, and it just kind of freezes you. Pitch misses, and that's ball one. Wouldn't and chase that time. Two and one. That oh. one misses. Now three and one. Two out spaces empty. Pop foul out of play off to the right. Out to short Anderson. Zips it to first, and the inning is over. Bucks draw a bit closer on this long ball. It's now a 3-2 ball game. And we're back. And here's the, the catcher, ball. Nick Fortes. The catcher. And a pitch. Ball. Just Hot. missed. Two oh. balls, no strikes to count. Saying he wasn't very sharp in the first, got hit around a little bit, just wasn't able to locate particularly well. A lot of stuff for the fat part of the plate. Yeah, Boog, he wasn't fooling anyone. It's a tough place to be because it's not always obvious what adjustments need to be made. Sometimes it's location. Sometimes it's being too predictable. Sometimes you're tipping your pitches. He's going to need to figure it out quickly, though. Good hard fastball up at the zone right there. They look Second really good right. coming in, but really? so hard to get on top of as a hitter. Oh, oh, yeah. Luis Arise stands in. Scored the first run of the game back in the first after a single to reach base. Oh, Just outside. missed. That one fouled off. One out, base is empty. No. And that's outside. Two balls and a Two strike. Balls. One strike. Swing and a ball ripped out towards right 
center field and a touchdown for a hit. Makes the turn and heads for second. In safely. It's a double and his second hit. Showed some really nice patience in that at bat. Worked himself into a good count. A lot of hitters tell themselves, line drive over the infielder's head. That's what I'm trying to do. Just keep that approach simple. And right there, it was perfectly executed. On time with everything and pulled it into the gap nicely. Here's Tim Anderson. Singled and scored his first time. And ball one. And the 1 0. He was late there, strike one. One ball, one strike. Here's a 1 1. And he grounds one to the right side. Paguero gathers and throws to first. Yeah, they take care of Anderson for the out. That's what a good sinker is designed to do. Get a guy to roll up a little bit, get the ball on the ground, yeah. kill some worms while you're at it. Yeah. And now the switch hitting first baseman, Josh Bell. 0 for 1, he struck out swinging last time. Oh, Had a good okay. eye there. Two outs and a runner at third. Bottom half of inning number two. That one finds the zone, and it's one and one. Two outs. And now two and one. Good eye right there. Jake Berger. Next to hit for the Marlins. And the 3 1. So now Take 2 on and 2 outs. Pretty easy walk right there. Last pitch wasn't even much to think about. Now that out. And up next for Miami, Jake Berger. One for one with a single and a run scored so far. Just missed. Hey, Swings boom. through that. One and one. Swing hey, and a miss. And that's strike two. One good and late two. sink on that fastball. Out of the hand looks so good. And then. By the time he gets in the hitting zone, hard to get the barrel to it. Telez yeah. takes it to the bag. What a play. Inning over. Marlin strand a pair, but they're up three to two. Back here with my pal Ziggy. Here's the shortstop at the play. O'Neill Cruz. The wind of the pitch. I know it's obvious, but you just can't miss Cruz when he's on the field. I've never seen a player like him. I mean, he's six foot seven, weighs 220 pounds, and is the tallest shortstop in the history of Major League Baseball. Only two now. Oh, one there. It's a good take. The shortstop takes the ball. the first half. Borgie just ran out of patience there. He took a couple of pitches to even that count off with two balls and two strikes, but that time chased outside the zone. Brian Reynolds here. Oh. Wouldn't chase that time. The Marlins up by a run. We're here in the top half of inning number three. Popped up. Snags it for the second out. 
the bat, the, bat. the designated hitter. Andrew. Here's Andrew McCutcheon to hit, and he's already singled in this game. Ball one, no strikes. No, Just missed. Two down, nobody on. And a foul ball. Two balls and a strike. Here it comes. Hard hit, right side. A rise on the first. And the Pirates go one, two, three. Down in order, go the Pirates. They trail it, three, two. Welcome back to the ballpark. Bottom of the inning, and now the center fielder, Jazz Chisholm Jr. As he turns on the rubber, and with that good live arm delivers. Been a rough start in the mouth for this guy. His third inning so important for him to get on track, turn the page, settle in, do all those things you need to do to give your team a little bit of length in this one. The 0-2. And there's a ball. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And now one away. And now, now Brian De La Cruz. No less good. Roy De La Cruz. In there for strike one. Keeps the at-bat going with a foul ball. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And now the right fielder, Pesu Sanchez. He's over one. Swing and that ball smashed on a line. And that's a base hit. And that keeps the inning alive. Waste no time there. Yeah, nice job of driving, driving that pitch the other way other on the line. line. You know, hitters, they take no, so many reps in the cages working on going to the opposite field. And it doesn't always translate into the game. But right there it did. And he did it perfectly. Garcia batting for the second time. And that's strike one. Go Chris through the early stages. He hasn't been very efficient in terms of the pitch count. He's going to need to get some quick outs if he's going to get deeper into this game. And that one fouled off. It is interesting, though, when you consider the way the game is run now, it doesn't even matter that much if your starter doesn't go that deep because teams are really They get the force out with room to spare, and that's the inning. So no runs here on a base hit, no errors, and one left. On to inning number four. It's the Marlins three and the Pirates two. Back here at Lone Depot Park. Here's the center fielder, Jack Sawinski. Sawinski. The pitch. Up the middle. Oh, nice play to first. And they get the out. Well, you can see right there, he looks very comfortable going to the backhand. Nice diving stop, gets up to complete the play. That'll fire the team up for sure. Down the third baseman, Key Brian Hayes. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. Top of the zone for a called strike. But it was bumpy in the early going for the lefty, but he settled into a really nice groove. Boils a two-strike pitch, and he'll see another. The 2 Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. Mm -hmm. 
Next pitch is outside. Oh. Really good take, especially with two strikes. And another ball. In the air, left side. De La Cruz gets under it. Two away down. Here's the speedy catcher, Henry Davis. He's already homered in this game. Misses just off the outside edge. I think that was a strike. Two down, nobody on. Top half of inning number four. Swing and a miss. One ball, one, one strike. One strike. Well, this is a good time to step out of the box, take a deep breath, and reset. A couple of change-ups. Probably won't see another one here. Good, that one way inside. Two outs. Battling here as he fouls it away. Three, and that two. skips into there. Wow, this guy's really battling up there as if his run is the game winning run. I love his tenacity. of the at bat do next. Got it by him for the K. And one, two, three, go the Pirates. They're down three to two. Bottom four. Now it's the Marlins catcher, Nick Fortes. Fortes goes five feet, 11 inches, 27 years old, and he was drafted in the fourth round back in 2018. They say it went. Oh, he doesn't get the call. Yeah, the count even one and one. Good spot there, but didn't get the strike at the knees and doesn't seem too convinced by the call out there on the mound as he tries to get a better sense of the umpire strike zone. Oh, and it is two and one. On the ground to the left. And one gone in the fourth as they get the leadoff man. The batter, number three, second baseman, Luis. Oh, boy. Now it's the Marlins' leadoff hitter, Luis Arias. Strike one. No ball, one strike. Base is empty, one away. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. In for a strike, and the count is 0-2. Oh, this guy is so comfortable hitting with two strikes, even a good pitch early in the at-bat. If he's not ready to pull the trigger, he's not worried if he gets to an 0-2 count. Yeah, the ball. And that one missing low. One ball, two strikes. Ball. Off the outside edge, and now the count is 2-2. Two and two. One down, base is empty. Stays alive. Comes a 2 2. And a swing and a line drive at a right field. Olivares makes the play. And there are two the down. Number seven. Shortstop. Tim, Tim Anderson, Anderson. The next up for the Marlins. Singled and scored back in the first. He's one for two. Out to short, Cruz. Over to first, and they take care of Anderson for the out. 
and it's a one two three inning so they make short work of them there we played four it's the Marlins three and the Pirates two. Back here in Miami, top five, John Shabby with Chris Singleton. And leading it off, Rowdy Telez. Lazardo back to work. That one finds the zone. Strike one. You know, these Pirates just aren't putting great swings on the baseball in this one. Just one extra base hit for them, so they haven't exactly been hitting the ball gap to gap or out of the park. That makes it really difficult to generate runs. Oh. Next pitch inside. One and two to Cal. Oh. Wouldn't chase that time. Two balls. Two strikes. That oh. one misses, and okay. that's ball three. Gets a piece there, we'll do it again. Now a screamer into the outfield. Drops in for a hit, couldn't run it down. Throws to second. But he's in there easily. All over that one right there. Loud contact leads to the double. I mean, you can tell it had extra bases written all over it as it jumped off of the stick. Now a pretty big at bat coming up with a chance to even this ball game up. So next to the plate for Pittsburgh, Edward Olivares. Swing and blast one down the line. It's gone if it's fair, but it hooks foul. Over the first pitch fastball right there, but just a little bit out front. Gotta let it travel just a bit more. No outs. Runner on second. No. Good eye in that spot. Man, oh man, I don't know how you take that pitch. That's as close as it gets. Goes down looking. Trevor Rogers gets handed the rock out of the pen. Still pretty early in the ball game, so this bullpen has some work to handle them. Best case scenario might be if he can come in here and get several quick outs, kind of bridge the gap that started left for him. At the plate for Pittsburgh, Leover Peguero grounded out to short in his first trip. That one's in there, 0 and 1. That's down and in. Definitely a swing and miss slider down and in. He finished that really well. Just couldn't get him to offer at it. Here comes a pitch. Ripped into right center. And now maybe extra bases. Coming home. He'll score. And the Pirates tie the game. It's 3-0. Well, that's a big swing of the bat, driving in the run with the two-bagger. When you connect and it jumps off your bat like that, you're thinking double at the very least. A great swing on the man. He wasn't fooled at all. Here's O'Neill Cruz. And he takes one right on the black. No ball. One one one. As a pitcher, you know the runner on second is ready to push things with his speed. A base hit's probably going to be a big run, so you really have to execute on the mound. The 0-1. Up the middle, and that's a base hit. Heading for the plate. Here comes the throw. It's off the mark, and he scores. 
Mission accomplished there as he picks up the RBI to give him the lead. Just kept it simple. Played pepper with the middle of the infield and took it back where it came from. And there's just no one there to knock it down. And now they've got some speed on first. So we'll see if they try to get him into motion. Up next for the Pirates, Brian Reynolds. Rogers keeping an eye on him. That's a little bit low. Rogers, a former All Star. He features a four seam fastball, a changeup, a slider, and he works in a two seamer. Just missed. Miami's bullpen with some action. Ryan Weathers, the young lefty, looks to be getting himself ready. Number 58 getting loose as well. Two and all to Cal. Here it comes. And there's the strike. Fouls one off. Two and two. in with that slider good two strike pitch right there at worst case scenario it's weak contact in play exactly where he and the catcher wanted it Andrew McCutcheon the next pirate to hit one for two right through there for a strike Two runs across in the inning, and we're at the top of the fifth. Two outs. One ball, two straight. Step off throw to first, hey, hey. and he just got his hand in there. pitch two and two. in the dirt but kept close nice job behind the plate there the pitch Got it. that's the third out but two runs for him and they jump ahead home half of the fifth coming up it's the Pirates four and the Marlins three Back here with my pal Ziggy, we head to the bottom of the fifth. Here's Josh Bell. The line of the pitch. Well, you got to give him credit out there on the mound. This outing started off a little shaky, but he's found a way to settle in and turn this into a pretty good start. Kind of shows you a lot about his mental makeup as a pitcher. Next offering is in for a strike. And downstairs. And the righty deals. And delivers outside. That's a really good take. Out towards right center field. Olivares moving under it. Hauls it in, and there's one away. Now that third base. Jake Berger, the next up for the Marlins. Home team down a run. Last half of inning number five.
Well, you can't really adjust your game plan for that last pitch. Guy hasn't thrown it very much. You got to focus on the stuff that he's throwing up there most of the time. Swing and a miss, and he got him. That's out number two. Well, clearly just anxious right there, and understandably so. In an 0-2 count, you feel like you've got a lot of plate to cover, and you don't want to strike out, and you end up striking out. That's just one of those pitches where it's not over the plate, but because you committed to it as it was leaving his hand, by the time you realized it wasn't going to be in the zone, it's too late to hold up your swing. And down on strikes he goes. And good work there as he gets a 1-2-3. Miami down in order. Score holds at 4-3. And we're back, top of the sixth inning. And now the center fielder, Jack Sawinski. And he deals. Way upstairs, and that's ball one. Signs of activity in the pen for the Marlins. Ryan Weathers, the left-handed reliever, appears to be getting loose. And a pitch. And that one fouled off. Slider misses outside. Pretty easy to give up on that pitch right there. Started on the edge of the plate with the spin. You know it's going to finish well off the plate. The 2 1. Inside just missed. And he walked to His ability to draw walks has been something that's been part of his career since day one. Keep Ryan Hayes, the next pirate to him. And there he goes. Slap the other way, foul. Sawinski gets his lead at first with nobody out. Foul ball there. Looks like you got a little excited on that fastball. Got to think to yourself, you want to stay up the middle. That way, if you're a little bit early, you hit it out of the ballpark. If you're a little late, opposite oh. field not. That misses. And a count one and two. Down the line. And that lands in no man's land a foul ball. The pitch. Ground ball left side could be two. Anderson to second, and they get him easily at first. It's a double play. He's so good at coming across the bag and snagging it with the bare hand and throw. I like the flair that he brings day in and day out. And now the catcher comes up to him. Henry Davis. And he's already left his mark on this game. He certainly has, Boog. A two-run shot in the second inning, and that made an early impact on this game in a big way. That clips the corner. Hard grounder into the outfield for a knock. So a two-out knock keeps the inning alive. Well, that'll make you feel good as a hitter right there. Everyone's trying to elevate the ball in today's game, but if you can hit a ball that hard on the ground, it's going to find some holes. And now it's Rowdy Telez. This one popped up. Foul ground, first base side. Cortez drifts towards it, and that's a foul ball. One hit, no errors, and a man left. Six, seven, eight, due in the bottom of the sixth. It's the Pirates four and the Marlins three.
bottom of the six. And at the plate for Miami, Brian De La Cruz. And here it comes. Foul back our way, and that's out of play. On the mound, he had a little trouble back in the first, but it's been a different story the rest of the way. Really settled into this outing nicely. Pitch is in there, and the count is 0-2. Movement in the bullpen. Dowry Moretta, the hard-throwing righty, is up and loosening. Baraki, the lefty, warming up as well. Kicks and fires. That's foul off to the right side. Keeps the A.B. going. And the pitch. Not close with that one. Down one and two. You could see he was trying to stay back long enough to handle the off-speed pitch, but just a little tardy on the fastball. That one way outside. Two and two. And another ball. Jesus Sanchez waits on deck for Miami. Back to work. 3-2 now. Bows it back with two strikes. The pitch. And that's ball four. That's a great at bat. He saw a lot of pitches and earned a walk. Pitch count's getting up there now. And not saying that's the reason for this walk, but this is the point in the game when every sign of wavering starts to get everyone's attention. And that one fouled off. Swing and a ball lined out towards center. Can't get there, and now maybe extra bases. Around second on his way to third. Throw comes in, runner stop, second and third, nobody out. Man, those are the types of hits where you don't feel any vibration in your hands whatsoever. Such a good feeling. Center fielders in today's game are so talented and so athletic. So when you blast one to deep center and get it to drop in, you know you really put a great swing on it. And that was nicely done for extra bases. And a pretty good chance we can see a lead change here, at least a tie ball game with both of those runs in scoring position. Manager out of the dugout now, and it looks like we'll see a change on the mound. Mitch Keller won't go any further and we'll be back with their first arm out of the pen after a quick break well, on the mound now really for the Pirates Roansi Contreras and never an easy situation coming in with runners at second and third he's got a base to work with so he doesn't have to be perfect but he does have to make some quality pitches now it's the DH Abasail Garcia Just oh, one. missed. One ball, no straight. The one off. Oh. Fastball in the corner at the knees, and it's a strike. Well, that's really the money spot. Down and away, if you can locate that consistently, it's going to be real tough for hitters to square that up. That's what you'd love to see relievers do coming out of that bullpen. At the belt and fires. And a count one and two. Go ahead run at second here in the bottom of the sixth. Okay. That one missed. I think ultimately you want to tie him up. Get the ball in on the plate so that he can't get the barrel to it and hit it to the outfield. Not even close there. And the count's full. Nick Cortez next to hit for the Marlins. 2 on the way. Base hit, one run is in. A second scores as well. 5 4 now as they take the lead. He did a shortstop, but it's off target. Very costly error in the outfield on that one. Two runs come across, so that's just a tough one to swallow. You know, some errors you can get bailed out by your pitcher if he's able to work around it, but not here. The damage is already done. And now for the Marlins, Nick Fortes. To third. 
throw over to Telez. Finally gets the first out here Number on the ground. Number three, second baseman, Luis. Oh, yeah. Here's the second baseman, Luis Arias. Well, the way these two teams have battled in this game, you know you need more. Got to continue to add runs if you're going to get out of here with a win. Smash to center, way back, and you can forget it. Hold on. And they boost their lead. It's 7-4. And that shot makes their grip on the lead even tighter. Good hitter gets pitch recognition early. He saw exactly where that was going to be. The challenge, not get over anxious and come out of your swing. He stayed on it and got out of it. Tim Anderson, the next up for the Marlins. And first offering is fouled off. Right-handed reliever. The shortstop takes a ball. Next pitch is outside. Swing and a miss as he chases that one darting out of the zone. Swings through it for the K. Slider got him for strike three. Well, that's the money maker right there. Two no, strikes, no, slider no, no, no. down and away from a same no, no. side thrower as the hitter. I mean, that's just tough. You're looking to protect with two strikes and very difficult to lay off. And first offering is fouled off. Two down, nobody on. And that's outside. And one that ball, is one ball strike. one. Swings through that one. He can one live ball. up in the zone all game if hitters will chase it. That's just too much velocity. Hitters got to look down in the zone. Fouls it off. Still one and two. Flew open a little bit with that front shoulder, but was able to slow his back down just enough to make contact with that pitch. Keep the bat alive. Oh, just inside. misses the mark outside the zone. That Three one off the mark. Full count now. He's really tightening up his hitting zone with two strikes here. I love it. Cold strike three on the fastball. And that ran back over the inner half. So they move out in front after a four-run outburst. Seventh inning coming up. It's the Marlins seven and the Buccos four. And welcome back to the ballpark. Now it's the right fielder, Edward Olivares. The lefty fires. That one in there across the letters. Well, we call that keyhole. Even though it's right there and looks pretty good, if he doesn't love it, he's not going to swing that early in the count. And that is in for a strike. Oh, and two down. Bounced up the middle. Oh, great stop to his knee, the throw, and that's a great play for the out. Look at the commitment to make the play down on the ground from the knees. That's not just arm strength, guys. That's core strength as well. Look at that rocket across the diamond. Outstanding job. 
So next to the plate for Pittsburgh, Leover Piguero. That misses. One and oh. Base is empty one away here in the top half of inning number seven. Now one and one. This is a very important inning here. After scoring all those runs, you want your pitcher to come out and just mow them down. The offense has worked hard. It's shut down inning time. And a swing and a miss. A lot of times you'll see a pitcher maybe double up on a pitch. This guy will throw it three times, four times in a row because hitters just can't lay off of it. And two away to start the seven. Well, he didn't want to go after him with the fastball at all in that at bat. Now Nothing bad, bad. but off-speed stuff. Oh, Even yeah. with all the change-ups coming, Ooh. somehow he was still early on the swing. So I think he had to be thinking it was only a matter of time until he saw some heat. And now the Pirates leadoff man, O'Neill Cruz. Got a good eye there. And now the lefty check swing. Did he go? One yes, ball. he did. Two outs. And a swing and a miss at the slider in the dirt. That completes the strikeout inning over. Back here at Low Depot Park, bottom of the seventh. Here's the third baseman, Jake Berger. Berger. And the pitch. And first offering is fouled off. You know, these Marlins, simply put, are producing a lot of quality swings. We've heard lots of loud noise coming from their bats, and this one happened. This one's into the outfield. Could be extra bases. Now he'll turn for second. Makes it safely. It's a leadoff double in the bottom of the seventh. Seems like he got exactly what he was looking for right there. Got a fastball, middle of the plate, jumped all over it. Absolutely smoked that ball. They hand the ball over to a new arm, Ryan Barucki. And this could be a pretty critical point in this game. They're hoping he's the guy to keep him within striking distance. So, man aboard, Jazz Chisholm Jr. digs in now. And that should be extra bases around third. He'll score easily. And they're up by four. Safely into second. He's got a double. A little more back spin on that instead of the top spin. And he's jogging around the bases rather than pulling up at second. the play. Brian De La Cruz. Baraki throws no, over he's and he's back in safely. First pitch misses. What a no. And it's second. Right, Outside. And that one hit to first. Telez yeah. steps on the bag and one away in the bottom of the seventh. The right field, number seven, Jesus. And now it's going to be Jesus Sanchez. 
I wouldn't expect many pitches up in the zone here. Pitchers looking for a strikeout or a ground ball, hoping to keep that runner at third. Ball one low. Up the middle, Cruz. At number two, and another run comes in. Two outs, base is empty. Now at the plate, Abasayil Garcia. Garcia. And there's the strike. Oh, and one. And a swing and a miss there. Oh, more and more guys are looking to slug regardless of the count. In this situation, we'll keep a close eye on his approach. The wind of the pitch. One and ball. one and two. Bases empty, two away, but two runs are in. If you're the bottom of the seven. Swings through that, and it's a strikeout. And that ends the inning. So they get a couple of runs on two hits, no errors, and no one left on. We look ahead to inning number eight. It's the Marlins nine and the Buccos four. Welcome back and a new arm on the mound to start the eighth. Anthony Bender. And you know, bullpen You're guys can struggle lead. sometimes when they're called now upon with big leads Marlins. because it just doesn't have the same intensity as a tight and game. Today. So we'll see how sharp he is. Your mental toughness matters in situations He's like this as well. So digging in, Brian Reynolds. Brian one for three. Reynolds. As he turns on the rubber, and with that good live arm delivers. He swings and fouls one off. Pitch misses, and the count is one and one. If you're on the mound right now, you know you have to retire this hitter. If he gets on base, it could open up the floodgates for this offense to score some runs. There's a swing and a drive. Forget it! A solo shot, and they're chipping away. It's 9-5. Anytime you have a pitch down the middle of the plate, the percentages go up for the hitter to do damage, even if it's a pretty good sinker like that one. Nice piece of hitting there at the plate. Andrew McCutcheon now at the plate. One pitch ball. misses okay. there, and it's 1-0. Oh. Right-hander kicks deals. And a foul ball. Nope. Close oh, one man. doesn't get the call. And it's two and one. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Ryan Weathers, the left-hander, up and throwing. Number 62, the right-hander also getting loose. Oh, that three. one misses. Three and one. The Pirates down by four, and we're in the top of the eighth. That clips the inside corner for a strike. Okay. This to third. Fires over to first. First out in the top of the eighth. The batter, the center fielder, Jack Sawinski. And next will be the cleanup hitter, Jack Sawinski. And it's fouled away. One down, base is empty. Right through there for a strike. And that's outside. Get a count one and two. Oh. 
And look Turn, out as that one pitch. ran in and got him. He had him one two and he ends up hitting him with a pitch next to hit Key Brian Hayes. Headed down the line and that will drop foul. You'll one. On the ground, could be two. Flips it for one. On the first double play. And that's the end. Cannonball coming. It's now 9-5. It's Major League Baseball, and it's on the show. Back here in Miami, out to the bottom of the eighth. Now it's the Marlins catcher, Nick Cortez. Baraki back to work. Yeah, there's the strike. <laughs> On the ground to third. Hayes to first. Leadoff man is out here in the eighth. The batter, number, number three. three. Second, Second baseman, baseman. Luis. Luis Arias oh, oh yeah. will hit next. And it may be a long shot, but a triple here will give him the cycle. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. That clips the corner. Fights it off, you'll see another. The wind and the pitch. Swings and misses. Struck him out. Two outs. Bases empty. Found the number two hitter, Tim Anderson. Anderson. The shortstop takes the ball. Just off the inside edge. Two down, nobody on. Here, the bottom half of the eighth inning. Yeah, that's outside. And a four pitch walk. Well, he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot. Hitter didn't no, offer at it. Now he has somebody to worry about over at first. And now the first yeah. baseman, Josh Bell. 0 for 3 with two strikeouts and a flyout. Right through there for a strike. They say it went. Oh, two. Anderson off of first with two away. Wouldn't chase that time. Pitch misses, and it's two and two. And that's just foul. Step off, throw to first. Anderson dives back. Hit hard on the ground is short. They take the force out, gets him easily, ends the inning. So no runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on. Through eight full, it's the Marlins nine and the Pirates five. We're back. It's the top of the night. And there's a new pitcher on the mound. Number 62. And he's got a nice lead to work with. So he should come in throwing strikes, attacking these hitters. Henry Davis getting ready to hit. He's already homered here in this one. Here comes a pitch. 
swing and a miss as he was out front that time. Next pitch misses way outside. Righty delivers. In the air, right field. And it falls. And the leadoff man aboard. Oh, this has been a really nice game at the plate for him. He looks locked in. I don't know how he's able to shoot that pitch the other way and still put something on it. That pitch was inside, and he let it get really deep. So pretty incredible hands to fight it off and still get good wood on it. Telez in the box now. No balls and a strike. If you're going to get something going, this is the time to do it. You get the leadoff man on. Everybody's got to look over the shoulder and say, I'm just going to keep the line moving. Don't try to do too much. Fouled off to the right. Left hand hitter waits. Ball. That one misses. Ball one. ball. Action in the pen down there. Ryan Weathers appears to be getting loose. And the right hander deals. Oh, and man. another ball. The Pirates down by four here at the top of the ninth. Two two now. Three Slider ball. misses outside. And ball four to a board. Not the start to this inning he was hoping for on the mound. Now he's going to have to now really that, dial it up right against through. the bottom part of this Edward. lineup to get out of this jam. At the plate for Pittsburgh, Edward Olivares. 0 for 3 with two strikeouts and a ground out. That no. one close ruled a ball. And that's ball one. It's getting squeezed a little bit here late. And a pitch. Hit on the ground might be two. Oh. There's one. How about that double play? That taking yourself double play can be a little tough sometimes because you got to get to the bag. You got to avoid the runner sliding in. But that second baseman did an outstanding job. He's really smooth with it. And he actually made it look pretty easy. Last chance now for the Pirates. Leover Peguero, the next Pirate to hit. And ball one. Two outs. Swinging a foul over the screen and back out of play. Oh. And that's outside. Two and one. Sliced hard but foul. The Pirates down to their final strike. And a swing and a miss, and that is the ball game. Whether you're a season ticket holder or you just come to a couple of games a year, to see your team win at home, there's just something special about that. Good job by this team to get it done for the hometown fans. Our final score here, 9-5. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Chomby saying so long 